Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so grateful to God for this opportunity to bring you his word. Let's pray. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we honor you for this blessed day. Thank you, Lord, for the month of August and that which you are doing in our lives. Meeting every need, supplying us your wisdom, giving us stability to walk in life. Thank you, Lord, for it. And today you will not hold back anything that will be profitable to us. Freely we receive our daily bread today. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Angels are walking to assist us today. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. We are in 1 Corinthians chapter 10. And yesterday we stopped at verse 6. Now let me read, let me read verse 6 again. And, and then we continue from there. He said, now these things were our examples. To the intent that we should not lust after evil things, as they also lost it. The children of Israel lost it after evil things. And I told you what those evil things were yesterday. He said, we shouldn't lust after such things. Learn to trust in the grace of God for today in your life. Learn to trust in God's ability to supply everything that you need. Learn to trust Him. He is God and He loves you. And He's ready to show it anytime in the name of Jesus. Praise God. Now let's go on. He says, Neither be ye idolaters as some of them. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. You know, you know the spot. When Moses was up there receiving the Ten Commandments. And, and they felt Moses is gone. Nobody to lead them. So let's, let's make an image that will lead us. All right, verse 8. Say, neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed and fell in one day three and twenty thousand. See? Now because God demands that you are holy. See? He demands it. Watch this. Neither, te- neither let us tempt Christ. Whoa. Hold on. Hold on. Neither let us tempt Christ. As some of them also tempted and were destroyed of serpents. They tempted Christ. Oh, this was in the Old Testament. Christ wasn't there. Oh, you think so? You think so? Let me show you. Exodus chapter chapter 17 and verse 2. Wherefore the people did chide with Moses and said, Give us water that we may drink. And Moses said unto them, Why chide with me? Yea, with me. Wherefore do ye tempt the Lord? Watch this. Verse 7, and he called the name of the place Masha and Meribah because of the chiding of the children of Israel and because they tempted the Lord saying, is the Lord among us or not? Now he said here that they tempted Christ. I just read the reference to you where they tempted Christ. They, 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 you know how they tempted Christ? You know, that, that's why sometimes it's important. Listen. You want something, just ask. Don't ask to prove anything. See, God, if you're truly with me, do this thing. Be careful because you can easily go into that area where you're tempting him. Now, why does he say the tempted Christ? Because Christ is the Holy Spirit. It's as simple as that. The same Holy Spirit I was walking with them in the wilderness. He, he's showing his goodness to them. And yet they tempted him. He said, I will be with you. And yet they are saying, eh, if God is with us, he will give us water to drink. See? Simple. We need water, Lord. He doesn't need to prove he's with you by doing a miracle for you. You just ask him, Lord, I love you and I know you love me. I, I'm thirsty. Can you give me water to drink? And he will give you water to drink. Is it a mistake they, they made? See, now watch this. Now, because they were they tempted him, they were destroyed of the serpents. 
Neither Momo ye as some of them also Momo, and were destroyed of the destroyer. See how they were giving up in the wilderness, one after the other. They were just dying in the wilderness. See, at every point of temptation, at every point of their lusting after evil things, at every point of them doing such wrong, people fall. Now, like I said yesterday, including Moses. Moses didn't enter the promised land because of the same thing. When you walk with God, see, listen, when you walk with the Lord, what you need the most is faithfulness. You first believe in His faithfulness. Now, when you believe in His faithfulness, then you begin to act in the same kind of faithfulness towards Him. Too. If you know God says, I will never leave you, then you begin to act like one who knows that God is with him. Now watch this. It says, now, verse 11, now all these things happen unto them for examples, and they are written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. Now we are in the end of the world, and we need to act right better than they did. See? Now it says, Wherefore, let us that thinketh, let him that thinketh he stand there, take heed, lest he fall. There had, I want you to follow this now. There had no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will make, but will with the temptation also make a way of escape that ye should be able to bear it. You know, I was talking to my wife recently and, and we, we, we began to examine what's going on in the world. And then I said to her, I said, you know what? You see this whole COVID-19 thing? There's a secret to it. And what is that? I said, remember, God will not tempt even the world. He will not tempt them with a temptation that is above them, that there is no solution. That's his character. God is not going to let anything come on the world that doesn't have a solution. The solution is already there. But you see, it is only those whose eyes will be opened to find the solution that we find it. You remember, look, at, look through the scriptures. In Egypt, when God sent the death angel to come, he told the children of Israel the solution. He said, mark your doorposts with blood. When the death angel see the blood, it will pass over you. Every challenge that came upon the world, God always creates a way of escape for his children. Now, these things were written so that we will be admonished and learn. That's exactly what I'm doing right now. So when we read these things, we, we admonish. We say, hey, hey, there is always a way of escape. There is always a way of escape. So you know what your job should be? Don't be crying for the challenge. Look out for the way of escape because it is there. Don't die because people are dying. Don't get broke. Because people are getting broke. If God is going to let a recession come upon the world, listen to me, there is a way of escape for you. You know that's why he says when men say there is a casting down, we will say there is a lifting up. You know why? Because we will see that way of escape. When every man was leaving, uh, leaving the land and going down to Egypt, remember Isaac wanted to go down to Egypt also. God said, no, 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 stay here. And God blessed him. That was his way of escape. You can only find the way of escape when you are connected to the God who allowed that challenge to come in the first place. Let's go. Wherefore, my dearly beloved, flee from idolatry. Run away from it. I speak as a wise, I speak as to wise men. Judge ye what I say. Now look at verse, verse 16. The cup of blessing which we bless, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? 
Now, we being many are one bread and one body. For we are all partakers of that one bread. Did you see that? We are all partakers of that one bread. Behold, Israel, after the flesh, are not, are not they which ate of the sacrifice partakers of the altar? What then? What shall I? What say I then? You know, all these things. What am I saying? That the idol is anything, or that which is offered in sacrifice to idol is anything? But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not God. And I would not that ye should be fellowship. Ye should that ye should have fellowship with devils. Ye cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the and the cup of devils. Ye cannot partake of the Lord's table and of the table of de devils. Do we provoke the Lord to jealousy? We are, are we stronger than he? All things are lawful for me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but all things edify not. Let no man seek his own, but every man another's wealth. <clears throat> now, what's he saying? He's saying here that, look, we are free. You know, you know, we had spoken in previous chapter about eating things that are offered to idols. And I said, look, he said, Paul said, actually said that, it's not like it's anything because we know those idols don't exist. We know that's nothing. See? But he says, look, it's better I don't eat than for me to eat and I cause my brother who's weak to sin. You understand? So he says, I would rather not eat. Now he's speaking here. He says, look, you cannot drink the cup of the Lord and drink the cup of the devil. So don't, don't do this thing. Don't form this habit of, you know, going to eat. You know, you know that, look, these people are uh, sacrificing to a God. And then you still go there and say, oh, they are sharing food there. I want to eat their food. I know it will not do me anything. He said, avoid it. You don't need to. It's okay. It's not like you are afraid of their God. But you see, you just separate that fellowship. Because when they eat, they are eating in fellowship together. So when you join them to eat in that fellowship, you are, you, it's idolatry. That's what he's saying. That's why he say, flee it. Run away from it. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So he said, let no man, verse 24, let no man seek his own, but every man another's way. Now that doesn't mean... Don't take your own money. Go and take another person's money. No. He says, seek the well-being. Seek the wealth of another person. Seek the well-being of someone else. Look, how, how am I going to make this person's life better? How am I going to make this person's business prosper more? That's what you should be seeking. No? Hmm. Please, oh, I can't help another person prosper. I've not finished my own. That's what, he says, that's the wrong attitude. Now he says, whatsoever is sold in the shambles, that it, asking no questions for conscience sake. So don't, don't start going to, you know, you know, sometimes you see those messages being circulated that no, nobody should eat meat because this meat, before they kill them, they used to sacrifice. He said, look, as long as you buy it from the market, don't start asking questions. Say, Malam, this meat, did you sacrifice before you kill it? Or this ram, did you sacrifice before you kill it? Come on, that's none of your business. It's none of your business. And he says, it is for conscience sake. Okay, so if they say, yes, so before we kill this um, cow, we, we pour drinks so that, um, will you not say you're not eating cow anymore? Now we already know whatever they do is nothing. And that's one thing you must understand. There is no way something you use your money to pay for and buy will hurt you. The moment you pay for that thing, it becomes your slave. It becomes your, you, you, you are, you are on top of that thing. So it can, it has no power to hurt you. Follow. For the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. If any of them that believe not bid you to a feast, and ye be disposed to go. Did you see that? So he's talking about, talking about unbelievers right now. Wow. Praise God. I just realized that my time is up. Praise God. I, I'm going to stop here. We're, we're going to continue because I can't even explain this right now. So I'm going to start from this very verse, verse 26 tomorrow. Thank you very much. Father, I bless them. Let today open the gates of healing and wealth to them. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you. Bye-bye.